Welcome to My Watches with Ben, where I share choices I've made in my watch collecting hobby. Was this a good or a bad choice? Stay tuned and I'll give you all the details. Today's watch is the Detroit Mint Mechanic. It's an automatic bullhead by Compact racing chronograph. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. I learned about this micro brand from a Facebook group um, when I started looking for racing chronographs. And somebody suggested Detroit Mint and I checked them out. I watched a bunch of videos. I saw the founder and I thought it was really interesting. So that's why I picked it up. Now I'll cover the specs and features, the positives and the negatives, and give my final thoughts. Let's start off with the specs and features. Specifications. The diameter is 40 millimeters across. The lug width is 20 millimeters. The thickness is 14 and a half. The water resistance is 100 meters. The lug to lug, there are no lugs, but that distance is 46 millimeters. The crystal is a boxed sapphire. So you can see by the distortion there, um, it is a sapphire crystal. The movement is a Valjoux 7750 clone. So it's an automatic chronograph, meaning it's self-winding um, with that rotor. The price that I paid was $400. And the case material, as you can see, is steel. Features of this watch, there's a lot of cool features to this thing. So starting with the dial, you can see that it has a beautiful silver sunburst dial. On the central pinion, there's uh, hands for hours and minutes that are baton hands with green loom. And then there's a stopwatch second hand in bright red. And that is stopped until you start out with the chronograph. The color is bright, kind of candy apple red. The dial text is in a nice italic fonts and is minimal and balanced. And then the, the red of the writing exactly color matches the, the red on the hands. There's circular applied indexes for the hours little tiny ones on the, the outer perimeter, you can see. And those are loomed, as well as larger rectangular indexes for all the hours except for three and nine. There are hash marks around the outer perimeter for indicating the seconds, with um, the fifths of a second indicated with much smaller hash marks, roughly a third of the length of the, the long second hash marks. There's a white tachometer scale along the, um, the chapter ring the black chapter ring. The nine o'clock subdial features a jumping minute on a 30 minute scale. So I'll just keep talking while the second hand approaches the top. What's gonna to happen is that that minute hand on the nine o'clock subdial is gonna hop over to indicate two minutes. And here it goes. There it goes, hopped over. So that's the jumping minutes. Um, the three o'clock subdial shows the always running second hand, and it's got 60 hash marks with longer hash marks for in five minute increments. And they have printed numbers for the 20, the 40, and the 60. And of course, on the minute subdial here, we've got a hash mark for every minute, but the 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes are indicated. And that's as far as it goes. It does not time any, I mean, it'll keep running once the 30 minutes are over, but it just it just keeps turning around. So you don't know if it's 31 minutes or if it's 61 minutes or 91 minutes, um, unless you can remember when you started the chronograph. The subdials feature grooved concentric circles. You can see that, so they kind of look like a vinyl record. The case is a tonneau shape and has no lugs on it. Um, no protruding lugs. It still has lugs. That's where the, the strap attaches, but the lugs are um, in line with the case, the, the cushion case or tonneau shape case. There's search, circular brushing on the case on the dial side, and there's straight brushing on the sides, which is very, very nice, very well done. And then you'll notice everything is very smoothly bezeled. Look at this bevel here, it's beautiful. There's nothing, no sharp edges. Well, there's a little bit of a sharp edge there but everything is intentionally uh, finished nicely. The chronograph pushers, you can see, kind of have a radial um, brushing here on the ends. The chronograph pushers are just smooth plungers, and they are shown in the top of the case, which is called the, the bullhead style. 
So the crown and the pushers are at the top rather than on the side. The left pusher starts and stops the chronograph. And then the right pusher resets the second and the minute. I just snap back instantly. Here's what it looks like from the back. Here's the start, and then the stop, and then the reset. The crown is signed with a D for Detroit, and it's knurled in a very interesting pattern. It's got the kind of a recess in the middle here, and then it's, it's knurled really nicely. It's very easy to grasp, and the hand winding feels really good. The finishing is just exceptional on this watch. The strap has an asymmetrical racing stripe pattern. So there's the red thread that goes all the way along in an asymmetrical racing stripe style. The clasp is signed with Detroit Mint in the same font that appears on the dial and on the case back right there. The display case back shows the, the 7750 clone, um, which looks exactly like the original Valjoux 7750. There is striping on that signed rotor. Of course, it's signed with Detroit Mint as well in that same font that is consistent throughout. The Valjoux 7750 has unidirectional winding, so that's why the this rotor spins so freely. Um, however, it's not. It's really not noisy. I'm, I have I have some unidirectional watches with a very noisy rotor. This one's not noisy at all. It's very nice. The case back also features engraving. 10 ATM is what it says on here. It says 100 meters on the front, but those are synonymous. Um, it says all stainless Detroit Mint Mechanic, the name of the, the watch, Mechanic. And the, the engraving's in the same font as the printing on the dial. The watch arrived in this nice um, case here that will hold three watches. And it comes with a Zulu strap, Zulu style strap, a single pass through, and a nice spring bar tool, Detroit Mint written on it, with the, um, the actual tools covered and protected. The watch comes with a very good warranty I won't show you the whole warranty, but um, it's signed by the owner of Detroit Mint, and the warranty covers any anything for the first 90 days, and then thereafter you can you can pay 75 bucks for for him to repair the watch. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Positives. There's a lot of positives to this watch. The quality of the finishing is absolutely outstanding. There are so many well-executed details to this watch, such as the, the color matching and the fonts, um, just the design in general. The sapphire crystal is always nice to have. It's just a great value. I challenge anyone to find an automatic watch with a 7750 movement at this price point, 400 bucks. You're just not going to find it. In fact, there's some other brands with nice watches that cost even more using a Quartz Miyota 6S21 movement. Um, a couple examples are the Gekota Chrono Timer at $479 and the Zodiac Grand Rally for $495. Those are quartz. And um, I will note Detroit Mint does offer this the same watch, uh, practically the same. It's, it's got a different name, but with a quartz movement. And that one is $225. So there's a lot of value from this brand. That is absolutely clear. Um, another real positive is this leather on the strap is so good. I have some other leather watch straps and none of them compare with this. It's really good leather. In the looks department, I, I think it just looks outstanding. Uh, the bull head is a very interesting shape and it's comfortable to wear since there's no crown or pushers um, to mess with wrist articulation. It's a great color combination to have silver, black, and gold. In terms of functions, it's just really great to have a chronograph. I love having a chronograph. Um, the jumping minutes is much better than having a continuous moving minutes. Um, the movement is really cool. That, that is undeniable. This, this movement looks way cooler than other movements I have. And it's nice to have automatic winding. You can get an ST19 um, hand wound movement 
and those look pretty cool too, but it's not nearly as good as having a, uh, an automatic winding movement. Negatives. So really the only negatives I can think of is that perhaps this movement is delicate. I don't think that's the case because the Velashu 7750 is just everywhere with chronographs. Um, that is like the default chronograph movement. So I, this is just something I'm trying to think of. What could be a negative to this? I don't have anything to back this up. I don't have any evidence that it's a fragile movement or anything, but maybe that's a negative. Um, I suppose the distinctive look might not be everybody's cup of tea, but of course it's my watch. I bought it for me and I, I, it's my cup of tea. So it's not a negative for me. I guess one last negative is just micro brands in general. You don't know if they're going to last forever. You don't know. So there's a little bit of unknown with that as opposed to a bigger brand. But the benefit of micro brands is you get, you get better deal a lot of the times and you get more unique designs. So I'm a fan of micro brands. However, since, since it's a micro brand, there's, there's less resale value unless the micro brand goes crazy popular. Like some of these ones have done like Corona Tokyo, or there's some micro brands where they end up being worth way more than you pay for them. Um, Detroit Mint is not one of those micro brands. So I don't think that the value necessarily stays there, but I don't buy watches to sell them. I buy watches to keep them. And this one's definitely a keeper. And now for the closing. There you have it. Was this a good or a bad choice? It was an excellent choice. Very money well spent as far as I'm concerned. The images on the Detroit Mint website are not great. They don't look as good as the watch looks in person and with the photos that, that I've taken. Um, thankfully, the watch is just beautiful in person. So, and then the finishing is, is just immaculate. It, it's amazing how well this is finished. So. I'm very happy with this one. I'll just mention this at the end here. This watch from Detroit Mint was inspired by a bullhead watch that Brad Pitt wore in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And they do offer, Detroit Mint offers this watch in, in all gold with the, a brown cuff strap like, like Brad Pitt has in the movie. So that's an option. And now with the review over, I'd like to share a Bible verse with you. If you've seen my show before, you know the drill. I'm not a pastor. I'm not trained. I didn't go to seminary or anything. I just really like the Bible and I like sharing it to other people. So I'm gonna do a little bit of analysis, bring in some other Bible verses, and then share how it's blessed me. And the, today's passage is Luke chapter 15, verse seven. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Here's the, here's the main thing. This is what I'm focusing on today. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So this, this uh, preaching by Jesus it kind of defies my common understanding of religion. Um, I know growing up, I thought that the best Christians were the ones who never got angry, who gave lots of money to charity, who went to church all the time. Um, but the Bible doesn't say those are the best Christians. The Bible encourages us to meet regularly as a body and to be generous with our time and money. So those are good things, you know, helping the poor and the downtrodden. These are wonderful things to do. However, it's this passage and many others which really extol the virtue of repenting, repenting of our sins. That's what God really loves. I'm going to cover some other famous passages that, that talk about the same thing. Here, I've got a couple other ones. The first one is Luke 18, verses 10 through 14. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, 
or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. I hope the, the, the language didn't confuse that, but the man that, that God is exalting is the one who said, um, who said, God be merciful to me, a sinner, beat his breast and prostrated himself and lowered his eyes and would not stand there proud. And then God is not all that impressed with the guy who thinks he's better than everybody else. One other passage, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 to 13. When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So God, so Jesus came to save sinners. He didn't come to save the guy who's got it all together, who's doing so great. God loves for us to do things, to do good things on his planet, on his earth. But what's far more important is that everyone be humbled, that everyone realize that they're a sinner. If we do the good works, it is out of love for, for God. It's not about glorifying ourselves. So if you have the wrong motivation, this is actually bad. We need to have the correct motivation for what we do. And the most important thing, the thing that heaven will rejoice over, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons. So that's what heaven loves, and that's what God loves. They will rejoice when any of us repents of our sin and turns to Christ. So how this has blessed me is it's really just comforting to know that all of heaven rejoices when someone repents and puts their faith on Jesus and gains everlasting life. That's just, that's just really encouraging and awesome. Um, Christianity is not a religion based on the strongest rising to the top. In fact, the Apostle Paul said, when I am weak, I am strong. And what he means by that is that his strength comes from the Lord. When he's weak, he gives it over to God, and then he gains that strength that literally the, the creator of our universe is supporting him. Um, this also convicts me. The other thing it blessed me is that it convicts me about how I need to share the good news with others. This is wonderful news, and uh, people need to hear it. <laughs> and heaven will rejoice if another person is saved. Okay, so that's all I have on the passage. I really like this one with the, the 99 sheep and the one sheep. My daughter loves this one as well. Um, but now I'll, I'll share a prayer. God, thank you for this venue to uh, share your word with others. And um, I just pray that, that your word would not return void, that uh, your word would go out and that it would, it would touch people's hearts. And pray that people would repent of whatever their own personal sins are and they would turn to you and gain everlasting life. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. Take care.